Welcome back. In this next video, we want to talk about uncertainty analyses, so asking the question, which sources of uncertainty are most important in explaining the variability in a model's predictions? Uh, and this is a, a very much a complement to uh, the idea of sensitivity analyses and kind of pulls together what we learned about sensitivity and, and uncertainty propagation lectures, uh, and one that will lead us very naturally into the next section, on next video on design, because if we need to if we want to uh, better constrain our models, we need to know which uncertainties are, are dominating their predictions. So again, our general uncertainty analysis builds on this idea of uncertainty propagation. I have some sample of inputs that I transform through some model that may be linear or nonlinear to generate a distribution of predictions. And uh, the variance in those predictions uh, is going to be approximately represented by the sensitivity of the model uh, and the variance in the inputs. And that actually is uh, a really important take home message, which is if I wanna know about the uncertainty in a model, I need to know uh, about the sensitivity and I need to know about the uncertainty in the inputs and that uh, each of those things by themselves is incomplete and does not tell me uh, everything I need to know. And that's and worth reiterating because very often you'll see people using sensitivity analyses to tell them what is important in their model. Uh, but a sensitivity analysis without uh, knowing the uncertainties in the various inputs uh, not only is incomplete, but it can be potentially misleading. So if you have uh, a very high sensitivity being multiplied by a very low uncertainty, you may end up with very little contribution to the overall model's uncertainty. And likewise, you could have a very low, you could have a lower sensitivity multiplied by a very high variance and ending up being a much more dominant term. In fact, if we put those things together, uh, here's a simple graphic illustrating uh, cases of what we want to focus here on these green lines, the uncertainties and the outputs. And so the things that we worry about in models are like this uh, top right figure. Uh, when you have high sensitivity multiplied by high uncertainty in inputs, we end up with high uncertainty in the outputs. And the other extreme, if we have low uncertainty about our inputs multiplied by a low sensitivity, we end up with very little uncertainty in our outputs. Uh, we end up in the extreme with you know parts of our model that we can essentially not worry about. You know, they're essentially you know constrained enough that they're not. Uh, you know, they're not, they're not contributing to our comps interval or predictive interval really. And then in between are these two alternative cases that are always worth thinking about. You know, the case where uh, high uncertainty uh, can lead us to um, a, a non-negligible contribution to the overall uncertainty even when a sensitivity is low. And likewise, when a sensitivity is high, but a parameter is well constrained, it's not going to be the largest source of uncertainty, is often not the largest source of uncertainty. So I'm going to take that general understanding, and then we're going to think about the fact that we also saw in the analytical form that we can approximate uh, the overall uncertainty uh, in a model by summing up uh, each of these individual terms they combine these two components, sensitivity and uncertainty. So this is a figure uh, decomposing the uncertainty in a, a mechanistic process-based model that has a whole bunch of parameters. So each of these things on the most left-hand column is a different parameter that goes into a model. And then here in the middle, and then in the next column labeled CV is an estimate of the uncertainty in those inputs. And remember CV is just the variance normalized, well, standard deviation normalized by the mean. So it's uncertainty on a percentage basis. Uh, and this was just done in this case because these different things had different units. And so expressing it on a CV just helped me under, it helped us uh, better uh, compare things uh, on a unitless basis. But in the actual analysis, we actually use the standard deviations and thus the variances. Uh, the elasticity is similarly, it's a sensitivity normalized with the units normalized away. Uh, so uh, an elasticity of one would be a, a unit change in, I mean, input causes a unit change in the output. 
and here I, uh, the direction is just the sign. So positive slopes are positive, negative slopes are negative. And then in the partial variance is how these two things, the uncertainty and the parameters times their sensitivity squared gives us an estimate of their contribution to the overall model's uncertainty. And I've ranked those things uh, from the highest contributions to lowest contributions. Initially, I'm gonna focus on the these black lines uh, showing this actually a very common thing, which is in a complex model with many parameters, it's pretty common to have a large number of parameters that contribute very little to your overall model's uncertainty and a small number of parameters that contribute disproportionately to your predictive uncertainty. And so if I was wanting to constrain this model further, I would focus on these parameters that are contributing most to the uncertainty and not worry about the ones that are contributing least. And that's actually what this figure actually shows in the sense that uh, the gray version of these dots was actually a first pass uh, with a more limited amount of data on each of these parameters. Uh, and then the second black pass is what happened after we went and collected more data on these specific processes to constrain these specific parameters. So a great example of this is this model slope down here near the bottom. That's the parameter that controls uh, the sensitivity of the stomata, which are the pores on leaves to opening or closing, uh, which basically controls the rate of photosynthesis and uh, the rate of water loss out of the plant. And so in our, our first pass of, through this analysis, it was a non-negligible parameter. So there was uh, a good bit of uncertainty about the parameter. And it was, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, sixth most important parameter initially. Uh, but it was a parameter that, that we knew how to measure very well. And so we, uh, a colleague of ours sent a grad student out uh, for a few days worth of field work and was able to dramatically reduce uh, the uncertainty in that parameter through a small number of high quality measurements and essentially moving this in, in with a little bit of targeted work from a high, uh, not the number one thing, but a, a non-negligible you know, top tier uncertainty, one that essentially has been moved to the negligible category. Uh, the other thing to remember here, as we talked about theoretically, that sometimes you have parameters uh, that are really important because they're highly sensitive. So like here with specific leaf area, not the highest uncertainty, but definitely the highest sensitivity. And that gives us an overall non-negligible uncertainty. Uh, and right next to it, uh, this leaf turnover rate, not a particularly high sensitivity, uh, but a very high uncertainty producing almost the identical contribution. And then obviously the, the worst cases are gonna be things that are both highly uncertain and highly sensitive. Those are gonna be our largest contributors. Cool, so that kind of uh, sums up the basic ideas of uncertainty analysis, that we can decompose the contributions, the overall uncertainty into the different parameters or inputs. And we can also understand those contributions in terms of elastic uh, sensitivity of, of each term and the uncertainties of each term. Uh, the, ex the last thing I want to mention before wrapping things up is that, uh, and this will lead us into the next section of talking about how we then go about constraining things, is all else being equal, um, if I have two things that are similar in contribution to the uncertainties, but very different in the sensitivities, I'm going to want to me measure the thing that's uncertain rather than measure the thing that's sensitive. Because the thing that's here, if you look at specific leaf area, uh, it's already fairly conf we already have a fairly confident estimate of that. Uh, so reducing the uncertainty in that parameter even further, uh, as we'll see in the next section, is going to be very hard. We get very once you have a lot of data about something, you get very little return on investment for additional data. Well, if some if an input is particularly uh, uncertain, you often get a, a much quicker return on investment uh, through additional measurements. Thanks.